President, please be seated. Le président. The court is now in session. Ms. Sakowati, could you report the attendance of the parties and individuals to the proceeding? Sakowati, Mr. President, our parties to the proceeding are present except the accused in Sari, who is present in the holding cell downstairs. He requests to have his presence in today's proceedings through his counsel. The request is for the whole day. The letter of waiver has been submitted to the greffier. As for the witness, after the conclusion of the current witness, La fin de la déposition that is TCW694 is waiting in the TCW waiting room to be called by the chamber. Through his best knowledge and ability, he has no relationship by blood or marriage to any of the parties or the civil parties to the proceeding. This witness already took an oath this morning. This with the next witness will be accompanied by the duty counsel, Mom Soutier. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Rochamton. Bonjour, Monsieur Rochamton. There will be questions again put to you by Ian Sari's defense team and then by Kip Pons' defense team. The chamber has observed that during the first few days, you have a tried your best to provide your testimony, but we also observed that uh, lately there has been uh, some issues in regards to your testimony. So please be reminded that you shall listen carefully to the question and try only to respond or limit your response to the question put to you so that you can save time. Afin de gagner du temps. And that uh, you can also uh, compose and control your emotion. Nous vous prions également de uh, vous efforcer de the floor is now given. However, before we give the floor to Ying Sari's defense team would question to this witness. The, the chamber will now decide the request by Mr. Ying Sari. The chamber has received the request by Ying Sari dated 1st August 2012 through his counsel to waive his direct presence in the courtroom and instead to follow the proceeding through audio visual means for the entire day. Chia Kun TV, the treating doctor of the uh, accused at the detention facility, has examined him this morning and finds that he is fatigued and that he cannot sit for long and recommends that he shall be authorized by the chamber to follow the proceeding through audio-visual means in the holding cell downstairs. And as Mr. Ying Sari requests to waive his direct presence in the proceeding today and instead to follow it from the holding cell downstairs through audio-visual means and that he is capable of communicating with his counsel, the Chamber therefore agrees to the request by Ying Sari to where he is direct present. 
and authorized him to follow it through the holding cell downstairs. By audiovisual means for the entire day of proceeding, a reboot, you are instructed to link the proceeding to the holding cell downstairs for him to follow for the entire day. The floor is now given to Ian Sari's defense to continue La posing questions to this witness. You may proceed. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors, and good morning to everyone in and around the courtroom, and good morning, sir. Let me begin by referring you to your second statement of 21 September 2008, that is E3-63, and I just want to cover a preliminary matter. It would appear from the first page, which is Khmer 00228843, English 00231408, and French. 00376053. That's this interview was began at 9 a.m. Now, if we go to the very last page, Khmer 00228846, English 00231412, French. 00376057. It says here that the interview ended at 11 hours in the evening on the same date. So by my calculation, that would be approximately 14 hours. And my question to you, sir, is do you recall how long the interview took place because from this entire interview, we only have Puisque a 14-minute uh, tape of the entire interview. De cette audition. Response. As I recall, the interview was conducted in the morning and it also continued in the afternoon. All right. And could you please uh, tell us how is it? that we only have a 14-minute tape of the interview when you indicate that it took the entire day, if you know. The President uh, witness, please wait until Monsieur the Chamber hears the objection by the prosecution. The prosecution, you may proceed. Yeah, Mr. President, we would object. Uh, this question is calling uh, for speculation from this witness. Uh, he's not in a position to know um, uh, the details of what was put on the case file by the investigating judges. He's already told, given his best recollection of the length of the interview, uh, I don't know how he can respond to a question about what was put on the case file. I'll ask some preliminary questions, uh, Mr. President, just to move on. According to Mike Dixon, who was the investigator uh, that conducted this interview, along with with his Cambodian counterpart, the entire interview was tape recorded. Could you please tell us what was done, what, 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 what did you do along with the investigators for that entire day that is not covered on the 14-minute tape? And please don't speculate. Tell us exactly 
what you remember doing with the investigators, that is. Response. They posed questions to me and I responded. Posé des questions. Ai and probably they also had the audio recording at the time. Ils probablement aussi fait All right. Audio. Well, according to D107-5, which is the report of the execution of the regulatory letter, signed by Mike Dixon and Sve Samnang, it says that the interview was audio recorded and a statement was taken. The audio recording, which is ready to be played, is approximately 14 minutes long. Prior to the audio recording, since it appears now from your testimony, that you spoke with the investigators for the entire day. Could you please tell us what exactly was done during that day? For instance, did they show you documents? Did they prepare something in writing for you then to read? What exactly was done? What was discussed? Because we have approximately 13 hours and 46 minutes missing from this interview. President Vines, the prosecution, you may proceed. Uh, yes, Mr. President, uh, objection is, is simply that uh, Mr. Carnivus is misstating the witness's uh, response. He indicated to the best of his recollection uh, that the interview continued uh, uh, in the afternoon. He did not say it went the whole day. Uh, certainly, um, based on the English and Khmer Tran versions of this, the, uh, it is highly likely that the uh, interview did not continue continue till 11 in the evening. Uh, the uh, Khmer version does not say 11 in the evening. That's likely a, a mistake or typo of some sort. But more to the point, the witness did not say, uh, has not said that he was interviewed the whole day until 11 in the evening. So Mr. Carnivore should not represent that as part of his question. If I may briefly respond, this is the uh, written record of interview of witness, the summary which was prepared by the Office of the Core Investigative Judges, Mike Dixon and Sve Samran. This is what the gentleman purportedly signed at the conclusion. He's told us that it was the entire day. I cannot assume that Mike Dixon would have lied in his record of interview and put something that wasn't there. So I'm simply asking the witness to fill us in on the gaps. What happened prior to the tape recording of the 14-minute interview that we have? If he recalls, fine. If he doesn't recall, that's fine, too. Acceptable aussi. Response. I cannot recall all the details. All right. Well, you were asked in details that happened 37 years ago. This interview occurred approximately four years ago. Can you provide us some details? Certainly, you're, you, you don't have a short-term problem, memory problem. Je pense que vous pas de but a vivid long-term memory. Mémoire à court terme, Certainly, you must remember avez, some uh, details. Des souvenirs qui remontent à très longtemps et qui sont encore très vifs. Je pense que vous devez vous rappeler quand même de quelques détails. Yeah, you. Response. 
when you refer to uh, the long term memory that uh, one Vous person but uh, yesterday i did not uh, feel that well and i did not have a, a good sleep uh, so my mind was not 100% uh, good mon esprit n'était pas à 100% When it comes to the interview, whatever stated in the that interview, I would agree to that. Uh, But as you asked me yesterday, and today, yes, I did uh, meet these two investigators, uh, hier, one foreigner and one a Cambodian, and I did provide Cambodian. my thumbprint on the record of interview. Digital. Au PV d'audition. Before the start, before the start of the audio recording, Avant le début de I was asked some questions, but I could not recall all those uh, questions that I was asked. Mais je ne me pas all right. De, And de did that questioning uh, take? the entire day because we only have 14 minutes of what would appear to be an entire day of interviewing. So lo how long did that questioning take place before you and the investigators went on tape to tape record your interview? Response. As I stated, I cannot recall the detailed events. There is simply a gap that I cannot recall. All right. Do you recall whether documents were shown to you to refresh your memory, so that when you went on tape? You could have an instant recall. Permettant de rafraîchir votre mémoire pour que, au moment de l'enregistrement, vos souvenirs soient instantanés. It may be uh, that is uh, the way. Il se peut que and cela se soit passé ainsi. when listening to the tape, and we can listen to it if you wish, it would appear, at least to my si Cambodian souhaitez, colleagues, uh, that you are reading the answers that you are providing. Do you recall whether the statement was actually written out for you for si then to read into the tape recording? Uh, le, le, votre déclaration a été écrite afin que vous puissiez le lire à des fins d'enregistrement. Réponse. Réponse. Si c'est possible, vous pouvez jouer l'audio pour que je puisse l'écouter. Est-ce que vous pouvez jouer because I do not know what's on the uh, recording, so I cannot uh, provide you the details of uh, what happened. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. President, with your permission, we do have it all queued up. I'm told to ask to play number one. I've never done this before, but I, this is what I'm told to ask to play number one, which is, which is the second interview of the gentleman. Perhaps he can listen to part or all of it, and that might assist him to recollect how the interview took place four years ago.
Council Michael Canavas, could you provide the, uh, the detail regarding the audio portion that you intend to play in this uh, courtroom? Ici au prétoire. So that it can become a proper record for the transcript and uh, the chamber can instruct the AV booth dans la to et display that portion. De demander, and uh, secondly, uh, à la régie audiovisuelle de, uh, could you first uh, tell the council, extrait. tell the chamber merci de dire à la chambre, regarding that uh, audio portion of the interview with the witness au sujet de cet extrait, uh, cet and uh, to de compare it témoin, with the uh, summary of the written record of interview, afin de le comparer au procès what verbal, were the discrepancies uh, in this Merci instance? De nous indiquer, uh, uh, sont les thank you, Mr. President. Entre, uh, we would uh, ask that the entire interview uh, be played. It's D107 slash 3R. It's queued up as to play number one. Du, du, la pièce D uh, it's a short R3 interview. R, this would allow the gentleman to hear his own words. Audition. I believe also the Cambodian judges would, would be able to uh, tell whether Cambodian this is spoken or actually written. Uh, when you look si at uh, what was transcribed and you look at the uh, summary, is virtually verbatim. When you look at the first statement, for instance, we have close to 100 pages of the interview that was transcribed with a 10-page or 8-page summary. On this particular summary of the second interview, we have uh, five pages, but if you take, a, take out the heading, it's about four pages long, which is exactly uh, about 14 minutes. So based on us are doing our due diligence, first we listen to the, the tape, as we normally do with all the statements. It was highlighted to us, to me at least, by my colleagues, that it appeared that it is written as opposed to spoken, because some of the language used uh, comes off that way, uh, and the way it's being, uh, uh, the gentleman is speaking. And also when we put in for the transcription ailleurs, and then compared it to the actual summary, miraculously, the summary dovetails the transcription which we just got. Uh, and so, based on all of this, we made our application early on, Pour as you raisons, recall, before the witness came into court, where well, we thought that an irregularity occurred. The gentleman now has indicated that the interview took place the entire day, and that he spoke to them. Perhaps they showed him some documents. He doesn't recall exactly. And he's unsure whether he actually read his statement that was prepared for him, which is why he's now asking to hear it. So it's 14 minutes. And we would request that the entire portion be played. The prosecution, you may proceed. Um, Mr. President, we, we would have no objection to playing uh, the audio. We think given the assertions being made by counsel, uh, it would be worthwhile to hear the 14-minute tape. Uh, I don't think he's made on a number of occasions uh, assertions based on comments of his national counsel. Uh, I don't think that's appropriate uh, uh, for, for lawyers to, to evaluate listening to a tape, whether a witness is reading or something. Um, so uh, that certainly is not evidence. So we should listen to the tape. And I would, again, I would ask that counsel uh, cease misrepresenting the witness's statement. He continues to say the interview lasted the entire day when that is not what the witness said. Uh, he misrepresents the, the timing. The Khmer original of this does not say 11 p.m. 
Uh, yet he continues to represent that to the court. But given his assertions, I think it's appropriate for us to listen to the, to the 14 minute tape. Mais vu les allégations émises, je pense qu'il serait important d'écouter ces 14 minutes d'enregistrement. The President, uh, Judge Cartwright, uh, you may proceed. Le President, Madame uh, la Mr. Carnivas, the, um, uh, the uh, trial chamber has a, um, a practical problem in relation to the la submission or the request that you are making. Uh, you suggest that it's due to the information you have received from your national colleagues that this matter was highlighted for you. Therefore, it um, is to do with the tone or the manner in which the answers are given uh, that uh, makes you suggest that there has be, been some um, uh, unclarity about the way in which the statement has been given. Two of the judges on the bench would not be able to understand this from the Khmer. Uh, do you suggest that we would be able to pick this up from the English or the French? How do you expect us to deal with this assertion that you are making? Well, I'm making an offer of proof as opposed to an assertion. And I think that's where I take exception to the prosecution's characterization of what I'm attempting to do, because I'm answering a question. Obviously, I'm at the same disadvantage as the two uh, international judges. But if I may, uh, if I may direct the trial chamber's attention to what the gentleman indicated. I asked him, and he suggested that if he listened to the tape, perhaps that might assist him. That's why I made the suggestion. I did not come in here today with the expectation of playing the tape, although I had it ready and queued up. But the gentleman indicated that, that it might assist him in recollect, because he's, he is, as far as I understand today, saying that it is a possibility that he read his uh, answers, and his answers were tape recorded. Réponses, That's my understanding of what he is stating. And if I'm misstating, en, en I can ask him again. Yes, the chamber has noted that uh, issue, Mr. Carnavas, that Mr. it was the witness himself who proposed this. But we are still left with the uh, same end result. Uh, some of the judges are unable to evaluate the uh, suggestions that you have made uh, and um, will not be able to do that independently of our um, of our colleagues. Uh, if there were discrepancies between the tape, the audio record, and the, um, the statement, that would be a different matter. 
but uh, it's a waste of time, really, to listen to it in French and English because we cannot evaluate the suggestions that you are making insofar as the witness thinks it might be useful to refresh his memory so be it but I don't think we can take it any further than that uh, but I think we'll need a little more time to discuss this matter before we uh, we finally decide thank you very well I can ask one or two more questions because I saw one of the judges shaking their head perhaps as, a, uh, as an indicator that I was misrepresenting what the witness had said and so perhaps I can ask the witness again uh, a couple of questions and then we can take this up at some other point after the during the research you can de uh, discuss this issue I'm willing to move on but I want to make sure Sure, to be fair to the gentleman, does he recall whether answers were written out for him to read into the tape recorder? If he doesn't recall, that's fine, but I would like to get an answer from the gentleman. So no response. The questions uh, in 2008 Réponse. session started uh, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Les questions commencé so à 9 du matin et se sont terminées uh, à 11 heures du matin. Uh, two hours. Donc c'était deux heures. And I acknowledge this. Et At that time, je le Questions were posed to me and read out, on and that the recording was uh, kept. Et on a enregistré I'll move on, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'll pass to other things. The President, you may uh, proceed, uh, but please oui. be more precise on the date. Uh, the witness already oui, indicated that uh, the testimony on the second phase started at 9 a.m. and concluded at 11 a.m., not uh, all the way to 11 p.m. Uh, afternoon. So this could be uh, mistaken for another document E3 slash 24, but the uh, document uh, before us here is uh, more about E3 slash 63, which, uh, in which the interview lasted for two hours only. And Cette this may indeed uh, lead heures. to the confusion. So could uh, counsel be advised uh, to be mindful and also uh, be uh, precise to the relevant document uh, to Maître avoid misleading. misleading. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President, but I, I do wish to comment. Merci, I'm not trying to mislead the witness. The document that I have in English says 11 in the evening. Somebody put it there. This is from the office of the co-investigative judges. The gentleman did say earlier that it took the, uh, the better part of the day. Now he's changing his story. What happened in between, I don't know. But to me, it seems that I'm going exactly by what I have. I'm not trying to mislead the gentleman. I've, I've indicated what the number is, and I do take exception to the insinuation that somehow I'm trying to mislead the witness. Mr. President, indeed, uh, we have the Khmer document which states uh, clearly that uh, uh, the interview conducted at 9 a.m. and concluded at uh, 11 a.m. E3 slash 63, the interview that uh, conducted in Dong Village, Malai, District of Bante Minche uh, province. province Bante and Minche. this interview concluded uh, at 11 o'clock uh, on the same day. Is, is it because of the uh, translation problem oh, or because of other? Could you please have it verified? 
we really rely on the Khmer document Nous of the interview. Nous dépendons des documents en pour ces entretiens. Uh, Greffier, could you please uh, provide the English version of the document to me so that I can have them Madame all verified? The reason I really emphasized on this is because we were afraid that there could have been some misunderstanding. There was another interview that uh, is stated in the document that uh, lasted until uh, the evening. Où il est écrit But dans le document qui a duré jusqu'à ce soir, mais pas celui-là. National Council for Mr. Kusumpon, you may now proceed. Council Kungsum on. Thank you, Mr. President. I may Merci, need uh, to uh, help uh, clarify this. Witness indicated that uh, the interview was uh, started at 9 a.m. But uh, Uh, the interview concluded at 11 o'clock, which, uh, which uh, does not emphasize whether it's 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. Thank you. This is uh, perhaps uh, the culprit of this kind voilà of misleading uh, problem. Uh, thank you. And the, which is why I try to be fair to the Merci gentleman to ask him initially how long the interview took place. Combien de temps avait duré And initially, he said it went into the afternoon. So as to not uh, waste any more time on this, I would like to go on to my Donc, next series of questions. Plutôt que de perdre du temps encore là-dessus, j'aimerais passer ma prochaine série de questions. With your permission, Mr. President, Monsieur I would President, like to continue. Permission, mon Madame Greffier, 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 Okay, sir, now let's go back to uh, when you joined the revolution. And it might be useful if you put the document down because I will not be referring to the document. Que vous cessiez de lire ce document car je ne ferai pas référence. Uh, you've indicated to us that uh, you have, that you speak Khmer, uh, although you're not fluent in it. And so I would like to ask you some questions about your education. Could you please tell us how many years of formal education do you have? Response. You were asking me how many years of formal education I had. I don't know how to respond to this question because I don't understand the question. All right. Did you go to school when you were a boy? When you were a boy, how many years did you go to school? Response, I did not go to school. In my village, I did not go to school. I only learned when I joined the revolution. Right. So when you joined the revolution back in 1963, I believe you said, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were approximately 16 years old. Is that correct? Response. Yes, it Réponse. is. Uh, uh, in, oui. in 1963, I was 16 en or 73, 17 years old, and I was still with my parents. Oui, chez mes parents. The meetings uh, started in the jungle, and I started to ferry letters from one village to another. Et commencé à être, uh, and uh, those meetings, in what language were they being Question. carried out? Et ces réunions, dans quelle langue? Response: The meetings were carried out in uh, Jarai language. 
Now, based on your earlier answers, is it fair to say that you began learning Khmer on or about 1963? Response. I started to learn Khmer. From 1963, but uh, I did not go to a proper school. At that time, my in-law, who had a base, and in the evenings, he would write something for me to read. Le soir, okay, so just to be clear, at that point when you were learning Kamai, could you at least speak it? Très bien. Or did you have to learn à how cette to speak, où vous how to read, le Khmer, and how to parler, write? Avez dû apprendre à parler, à lire et à écrire. Response. In 1963 and prior to 1963, in 61 and 62, en 63, at, at first uh, we learned Jarai letters, the letters that are more like the French alphabet, and then we learned Leo's uh, letters. Puis, nous avons appris des lettres de l'alphabet. And in 1963, my in-law, whom I said, had uh, a base. Uh, he did not go to school. Lui non plus n'est pas allé à l'école. But uh, he learned on the job in the moment when he let uh, the movement, because he Dans was uh, taught uh, some Khmer, so he just Khmer. imparted. Uh, the lesson he learned on the job to me lui, like that is not a systematic uh, form of education. All right, so in 1967 Donc, or 68, en 1967, uh, how 68, good was your Khmer by that point, considering the way you were learning it? De Khmer à cette date, compte tenu de la façon dont vous l'avez appris? Response. Réponse. In 1966, I left my home. It was in August. In 1967, a year before that, I stayed with another cadre un autre cadre. in another village where I Dans was taught to listen to Khmer conversation like enseigner. eating going places, des conversations en Khmer, uh, pour, I, knowing exemple, the directions, only the terms, um, like that. So des, I, des I picked up, up I memorized uh, these terms. Donc les termes At that time, I could enseigner. listen to some Khmer words spoken by Bong Lan. My Khmer was 30% at that time, and it was good enough for me to perform my work to carry the letters to the target locations. It was difficult, uh, the roads was difficult, but uh, I could still manage uh, to uh, go about uh, comfortably. And I later on uh, was uh, uh, noted by uh, the brothers that I could do my work. 
All right. Les, les frères se sont rendus compte que Let je me go back to my question. By 1967 or 68, question. could you read question. En 67, 68, or write Khmer? Ou écrire la langue Khmer? Some words, directions, and asking for things, but could you read and could you write? Vous saviez la conversation de base, mais vous saviez vous lire et écrire. Response. At that time, I Réponse. couldn't write properly. But at that time, when I was taught, the, they taught based on the documents. They was teaching about the people's war, the guerrillas' war. I had to memorize the documents. The documents were handed out to me and I had to read and memorize things. The terms American imperialist, the struggle movement, the resistance movement, these terms were well picked by me. And when I remember very clearly when Om Yang Sari came to teach us. My question is, could you read? It's a yes or it's a no. Could you read Khmer at that time? Oui ou non? Saviez-vous lire ou écrire le Khmer? The President, uh, International Court Prosecutor, you may now proceed. Uh, I would object. Uh, the witness did answer his question and explained uh, exactly uh, what he was able to do in terms of reading uh, materials and writing. Uh, and I would add that uh, counsel's tone is inappropriate. He's being argumentative and badgering the witness and uh, in addition to uh, asking him a question that he already just answered. Uh, Mr. President, first, the gentleman Mr. indicated that he was learning words, directions. So he's memorizing words so he knows what is left, what is right, what is forward, what is backwards. The next question was, could he read? Now, from his previous answer, it appeared that he wasn't learning how to read, which is why I asked him. And I'm interested in knowing whether he could read at the time. And it's a simple answer. It's a yes or it's a no. Could he read? And to what extent? Response. As indicated, I could read and uh, some texts, and I could take note because I had uh, learned letters. I was in grade seven in Laos language. So when I started learning Khmer, the education I obtained in learning Laos language could help me learn the Khmer language. And I could read. All right. Now, uh, So Hong, in his interview, and I'm referring to E3 slash 417, Kamai page 00399186, English 00404288, French 00434725, states the following. En anglais 00404288, this document mentions Comrade Chiem, who was an ethnic minority, but could not speak. Khmer very well. Ethnic, mais qui ne pas bien le Khmer. Is that a fair characterization of your Khmer speaking capabilities? Là une de vos Sir. Mm, but my Response. Response. Yes. Oui. Thank you. La and during the uh, 
the period from 67 to 68 to Nous say 1975, can you please explain to us how much time during the day or during the week or during the month you devoted jour, to improving le, le, your reading and mois, writing skills uh, in Khmer, if you spend any time at all? Response. I really have high devotion. I Je suis très appliqué. learn to read, to, to speak. J'ai appris à lire, à parler. And uh, in the community, the majority of us uh, Uh, or in in the the, mo the movement at that time, the majority of us was uh, uh, ethnic minority people. La plupart d'entre nous, étions of them, mainly, many of whom were Jarai ethnic uh, people, Jarai. except the senior brothers. À part les, uh, And uh, we were very committed uh, to speaking Khmer, not uh, communicating with other. Uh, in our Jarai language, and we were really determined nous, uh, to this. All right, right. thank you. Now, let's talk Question. about the period when you were Merci. working as a guard or security uh, in uh, Ratanakiri. Uh, can you please tell us who your superior was? Who was giving you orders? Response. There were some Khmer brothers, including Bong Pang, and Bong Yon, Bong Soi, Bong Yan, who gave me orders and the My immediate superior was Bang Pang. Pang. And during that period, was So Hong uh, working so Hong along with you, avec vous? doing more or less the same things as you Il were doing? Plus ou moins la même chose que vous. Response. Response. Bong So Hong did not uh, so Hong, work uh, with me that uh, at, at that moi, time. À He only came to the Dragon Tales uh, location along with uh, Bong Koi Tun. It was not until the September of 1970 when we met. Avant, All right, but when he did come in 1970. Did he also work along with you in security or guarding avec vous en under the supervision and direction of Pong? Sous la direction de Pong. Response. I went uh, from the Dragon's Tail location with the Bang Bang, not uh, So Hong. Dragon, bang bang, so are you telling us here today Christian. that So Hong was nous not nous with you then at that time? So that vous you vous never worked with as security or guard with So Hong under the direction of Pong? I just want to make sure we have a clear picture here. J'essaie de bien comprendre.
response. Reports. Indeed, uh, Bong So Hong was under the supervision of Bong, Bong Pang. Uh, so Hong était sous les ordres de Bang. And Question. during that period, yeah, uh, was he working along with you or was he in a different location but still under Pong's supervision? Sous la direction Which de of Pong. the two? L'un ou l'autre. Response. Réponse. From the time we met uh, in the jungle between Mondolkiri and Kroches and until uh, at S71 uh, we had et remained S71 together, working together. Nous travaillions ensemble. We were under pounds of provision working together until the date when Phnom Penh was liberated. Okay. Um, because I'm looking at his testimony and it's Khmer 008037181819 English 008049619 and French, it's 0084855, testimony given on 26 of April 2012. He's asked a question, and just to be precise, uh, I believe I'm asking him the question, starting with line 7 in English, page 51. But let me switch slightly to Chiem. As I understand your testimony yesterday, si compris, you also met him hier, out there in the jungle in 68 or 69. Ou 69. Is that correct? Est exact. Answer, yes. Réponse, oui. It was time in 1967, 68 Et or 69. 67, ou Question. Question. And was he also under Pong's supervision or authority? Supervision de Pong? Or was he under someone else's authority Ou, at the time? Both Chiem and I were under the supervision of Pong. Chiem et moi étions tous deux sous les ordres de Pong. And later on, he says the same thing at the bottom of the page. I was under Pong's supervision, so I would work together with Chiem. So, uh, let me go back. You said Donc, today, 1970, here the possibility 70, is 67, 68, ici, or 69. Thinking back, is it possible that you on were working with him as early as 67, pense, 68, oui, or 69 que vous under Pong? Sous les ordres de Pong? จำจำนักนี้เห็นสมัยเนี้ยถ้าน่ะบางสองนั้นสองหงพี่หกปมปาร์พี่หกปมใบ I met him in the jungle and then I worked with him at the uh, office S21 until the liberation. Avec lui à S71 but, uh, la libération. prior to that, that is in between 67 to 69, I had not met him. Je ne pas All right. And going back to what I was originally asking, uh, when he was out there with you, taking directions from Quand Pong, was he doing Pong, the same kind of work that you were doing, that is, providing security uh, for the brothers or the uncles? Response. 
When réponse. we were together at S21, Lorsque nous étions we ensemble had à S21, different duties. nous avions des responsabilités Pong was in charge Pong avait in that la office. responsabilité générale de ce bureau. And that was uh, his leadership responsibility. And for so long, he was actually the secretary of uh, Uncle Paul Pot. Il était le secrétaire he did the writing Pot. for Paul Pot. Il, uh, and he actually knew how to write a motorbike before I did. Il savait aussi uh, conduire une moto avant moi. And when Om had to go somewhere, Et he would devait s'absenter. Transport him on his lui motorbike. Qui le transporter sur sa moto. All right. So if he testified that he was bien. providing security, il a témoigné avoir assuré la sécurité. Uh, at least to the best of your knowledge, you never saw him doing Mais that sort of work. Mais d'après vos connaissances, vous ne l'avez jamais vu faire ce genre de travail. Response. Réponse. When you talk about security, there should be a distinction between the first phase within 1970 to 1975, and another period from late 1975, that is from 1975, to late 1975, we were enfin, working together. Uh, we also had ensemble. the same quarter of accommodation. His room was uh, adjacent or back to back to my room. Sa chambre était derrière la mienne. And when I got the task as the chief of the office, Lorsque je suis devenu le chef du bureau, he, he was the second person after Om Ying Sari, and I was the person directly subordinate to him. Uh, le second de Yang Sari We're back in 1969. We will get to that period. Question. So that's the part I'm focusing right now. Nous allons arriver à cette période. Et you je recall my original question, or would you like me to uh, ask it again? Que vous que Which is back then, was he, if he, if he was providing security, is it possible that you were not aware of it? Si lui dit avoir assuré la sécurité, est-il possible qu'il l'ait fait sans que vous l'ayez su? Response. Réponse. I just stated I had not met him during that je period. Je viens que je ne l'avais pas rencontré à cette période-là. Because I did not meet him and he did not me meet me. Je ne so pas we connu. were not Il introduced to one another or talk about the, the matter of security at all. Donc nous right. pas pu we'll go step by step. Sécurité. I just Mais thought you told us earlier that you met him at S71. Now, did you actually meet him, or was it a mistranslation? President Witness, you do not need to respond now, you need to wait. The prosecution, you may proceed. Yeah, Mr. President, perhaps Mr. Cronovis didn't notice, but when he asked the previous question, he referred to the 1960s um, the period. This is why he got the answer that he got. If he wants to ask him about the 1970s and S71, I believe he should be precise about the time period that he's asking. The gentleman indicated 67, 68, he had not met him. 
which left open the possibility of 69. So my question is, back in S-71, was So Hong providing security? You told us that he was Pol Pot's secretary, writing things for him. Now I'm asking you, was he providing security with you under Pong's supervision? Response. As I said, at Office S71, we were there together under the leadership or supervision of Pong. But I did not receive any instruction from him regarding the security matters. It was only Pong who was overall in charge. But my direct superior was Kain. He was also an ethnic minority person. Let me try one more time. I'm not asking you, sir, whether So Hong was giving you any directions. I'm asking you a very simple question. And the question is, when you were there at S71, I'll wait until the gentleman finishes. The president, Le president. Mr. Witness and a duty counsel, Monsieur please do témoin. not discuss during the time that you are Et being questioned. Do only discuss the, the matter or your response that you may fear would incriminate yourself. Otherwise, it's going to interfere with the process of question and succession. Council, you may continue. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me go back to what, um, the question that I've asked already three times, which is, back in S-71, when you were taking directions from Pong and providing security or guarding, was So Hong doing, doing the same thing, among other things? Was he also providing security and guarding along with you? It's a yes, it's a no, it's a I don't recall. Response, I do not know. Now, when you say you don't know, are you suggesting and do you wish the trial chamber to believe that he could have been out there taking direction from Pong providing security at meetings that were being held there and you, on guard, at the same time, would not have known his presence. Is that your answer? The President, uh, witness, Président, wait. Témoin, the prosecution, you may proceed. And the Khmer channel is not uh, that clear. Could you check? Le canal en Khmer, uh, pas très clair. Um, Mr. President, our objection is that the witness has now asked, answered his question that he doesn't know, and now he's asking him to speculate on what may have been going on that he didn't know of. Uh, so the question is argumentative and calling for, for speculation from the witness. Uh, Mr. President, we've heard So Hong, we heard his testimony, we know what he said. I won't repeat it here. Now, it does, lay, it, it does provide a possibility. Perhaps So Hong was there incognito. Perhaps he was there posing as something other than what he told us. But the, it goes to the gentleman's credibility. 
because the gentleman has claimed that he could overhear what is happening at the meetings. So Hong, who told us uh, he was there and guarded, told us something of a different story. That's why I'm asking if the gentleman, if, if So Hong was there guarding his, uh, along with him, then we have a contradiction. If So Hong was not, then obviously we have two other possibilities, but I'm willing to, I'm willing to press the gentleman for a clear and concise and honest answer. The President, the objection and ground for the objection by the prosecution is substantiated and sustained. Witness, you do not need to respond to the last question. Now, when you were out there at S71, were you staying in the same location as So Hong? In other words, were you occupying the same hut? I heard on the command channel at the uh, S21. Is it the translation issue or is it the question? It's, it should not be S21. S71. The President, uh, Mr. Council, please uh, repeat your question. When you were out there under the direction of Pong, and So Hong was also out there, were you occupying staying in the same hut? Response, no, as I said earlier. He lived close to Om because he was the secretary for Om. And there was a, a kitchen hall which was about two, three hundred meters from, from him. And when it comes to guard duty, so Hong was also on guard duty, but it was part of the internal guard duty while I was engaged in the external guard duty. And he I referred to S21 and at 71 rather, and S71 had internal and external compound, a part of it. All right. So let me make sure I understand you correctly. So Hong, according to your testimony and your memory was part of the internal guarding while you were external. Did I get it right? But response, yes, that's what I just said. All right. And when you say internal, does that mean that he would have been on the inside? He would have been where the meetings were being held while you were on the outside or further away? Response, I was uh, guarding outside, so uh, I, uh, I was at a, a, a distance. But it, it varied, and I, while I was on guard, I was also mobile. And what was the distance that Pong had designated for the external security? How far were you to be located in order to guard? Response. Réponse. During the working hours, if I was instructed en by my direct superior travail, to provide si a close guard, then I would do so. And if I was uh, assigned to guard uh, at a distance, si then I would just uh, obey the instruction. 
une garde plus éloignée, alors je suivais les ordres. You told us earlier that he was that So Hong was part of the internal and you're part of the external. And my question is if there is a meeting going on and you're part of the external, can you please tell us the distance, how many meters away you would be as a second perimeter of guarding those who are conducting the meeting? How far away would you be from the internal guards? Vous vous trouviez à quelle distance des gardes internes Mr. Witness, please wait. Le président, témoin, Did you hear the decision on the objection raised by the prosecution? The prosecution, you may proceed. L'accusation, vous avez la parole. Uh, yes, Mr. President, we would ask that, that counsel specify which meetings he's asking about. There's been no testimony that there was a standard uh, distance uh, that they had to guard for all meetings. If he wants to lay that foundation, he can. Otherwise, if he wants to ask about a specific meeting, he should direct the witness to a specific meeting. Uh, Your Honor, I'm entitled to, to get general information from the gentleman. So I'm asking him a simple question because it's our understanding from his testimony and also from our knowledge that there was more than one perimeter of guarding. He's already told us two. So he's told us that he's on the exterior. Presumably, they, they guard in a sort of a uniform fashion. If not, he'll tell us. I'm going step by step.
move on à to other questions which are closely relevant to the portions of the closing order alleged against uh, your client. Please try to uh, proceed as fast as you uh, and efficient as uh, you can because the time is running out. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Although uh, the, the line of questioning was directly related to the testimony elicited by the prosecutor concerning what he heard at, uh, or what he could hear at meetings, hence the reason why I thought this was a relevant um, area to explore. Sir, could you please tell us if you were managing any people while you were out there guarding? une équipe de personnes pendant que vous montiez la garde? Est-ce que vous aviez des gens sous vos responsabilités? Réponse. Réponse. Amongst the 80 of us, we were all on mobile. Nous it was not just myself, but uh, all of us. Tous well, that was in my question, though. La I'm asking whether you were supervising or managing si other guards, uh, or were you on your own receiving your orders si from Pong and doing si as seul en you were directed? Response. Réponse. When instructions were given to me by Pong, Pong me then I would just follow the instructions, for example, to guard. Par exemple, quand il me de Regarding Bong Khan, who was my direct supervisor, I would also follow in direct, his instructions. And if he assigned me to Guards, then I would guard, si or if he asked me garde, to assign faisais. other people to guards, then si I would just do that. Nommer, uh, pour All right. Garde, and uh, if you could please explain to us. From that period all the way to the à fall of Phnom Penh in April 75, the level of your experience in managing or controlling. Other guards or soldiers Response. I did have uh, experience so that I could carry out my duty. Without the experience, I would not be able to accomplish it. In terms of uh, politics or the military, I did have experience in those areas as well. And when it comes to patrolling around the office or the guard duty or the management, I did have experience in these areas as well. So I did have quite a great deal of experience. Because we worked during the day and we held a meeting in nous the evening to criticize or self-criticize one another in order to improve ourselves. The meeting was a kind of a, an objection to lighten our future path. Uh, and to resolve those uh, matters. So we would see the changes, the improvement, for example. All right. Now, can you please give us a, some specific examples 
because you spoke in generalities. You told us that you had these theoretical meetings where you're self-criticizing each other. But if you could tell us concretely one instance where you managed more than, say, yourself, where you had a number of people and you were asked to, to manage a situation, whether it was guarding or whether it was patrolling or whether it was attacking. Can you please, so we have an indicator of the real level of your experience in managing people. Response. Let me give you an example. Je vais vous donner un exemple. Let me touch upon the issue of uh, security. Dans le domaine de la Guarding sécurité, at night or at day is still part of the security. Ou, uh, le jour so the security is for myself, for everybody else. De la sécurité, de ma and based on the instructions, we autres. would carry out uh, the duties. And there had been no incident uh, related to the, uh, this matter or the security matter. And we would know and deal with any issues that uh, would have uh, come up. Y avait des problèmes, nous étions en All right. Uh, does that mean La what you're trying to tell us uh, that you were in charge of those guarding and that you were able to position the people in a particular way, de, uh, particular place, de to ensure that no incident? Is, is that the example you're giving us? Gardes, or are you merely, uh, merely telling us that while you were on guard duty, nothing occurred? Which of the two? Response. Réponse. Regarding the true instances that you raised, uh, I myself, I was responsible for what I was assigned, and Moi, everyone else did the same. De ce that is, in regards to the uh, guard duty. Les autres faisaient de même lorsqu'il s'agissait des tours de garde. All right, thank you. Let me. Uh, I'm about to move Merci. on to another topic, which may take uh, longer. Well, it may take ten minutes. So I'm at your uh, disposal, Mr. President. I can go on, or I see it's ten thirty. Décider, Monsieur le Président, il est 10h30, où je peux poursuivre the president. Le Président, the time is now appropriate for a short uh, recess. Nous allons we will marquer une courte pause have a break for 20 minutes and return at 10 to 11. Reprendre à 11h moins 10. Court officer, could you assist? the witness and the duty council during the break and have them return at 10 to 11.